This is the new Kia EV5 GT, and it's being manufactured in China for overseas markets. Kia and Hyundai are pretty much non-existent entities in China. They both pretty well left the country in terms of trying to make cars for the Chinese, but they've decided, you know what? What about we just make cars in China, EVs in China, using lithium ion phosphate batteries that are very cheap from CATL, and then we just ship them worldwide. That's what this car is. That's why this car will be affordable. And that's why it's worth having a look because this is actually gonna be very good. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. I've heard that this vehicle could be actually quite affordable. There's really no proof of this yet. We haven't seen prices from, from Kia. We see all these made up prices by different um, publications and websites who I don't need to name, of course you know who they are. They just make up prices. We don't know the price yet. Kia have not revealed the price for the EV5 or the EV5 GT that you see here, but they have said that it will be price comparable with the Tesla Model Y. And it's a similar size. It might even be a little cheaper. Who knows? We'll wait and see. One thing we do know though, is that it'll have 313 horsepower, and it looks exactly like the EV9, just smaller, just like shrunk down. I quite like it. Um, I don't know why, I think it just works pretty well. So what's the difference between this model and the normal EV5? Because this is of course the GT version. Well, visually the differences between the GT and the standard model, uh, they're pretty minor. There's a unique trim design on the lower parts of the front bumper with gloss black inserts and color coded trim instead of the silver finish applied to the regular EV5. It does look better, I think. The color coding extends to the side of the EV5 GT where a body colored and gloss black panel replaces the base model's metal effect and matte black trim. Around the back, similar changes are in place with the squared off rear fascia comprising a different bumper with a larger license plate holder and the same trim effect. Now, all of this to me is pretty minor. The main thing, that we should take away from this vehicle is not really these small visual changes, not even the fact that it's made in China, but more the fact that it's a Kia vehicle, which will have 350 kilowatt fast charging, and it will very likely use CATL's new Shenzhen LFP batteries, which they can actually charge up to 550 kilowatt. They don't get affected by the cold, even at minus 10 degrees. Uh, they don't have, they, they have almost zero battery loss, very, very close to zero. These batteries have just won the Battery Technology of the Year Award. And really, I mean, they have higher energy density than the previous version. So we should see a decent amount of range from these cars. Now, like the standard model, the front axle in this GT has more power. Um, it's got 215 horsepower and 229 pound-feet of torque. But the rear axle adds 98 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. So the combined power output is 313 horsepower, or that's about 225 kilowatt. Not exactly powerful. Um, of course, it's a similar power to the Chinese version of the standard range, the cheapest version of the Tesla Model Y. Yeah, so not exactly exciting. But we do know the weight of this vehicle. It's 4,916 pounds. So it's, it's, well, it's heavier than a Tesla Model Y, a fair bit heavier. And that's probably coming down to the fact that it's using those lithium ion phosphate batteries. They are heavier than ternary batteries. But that means it's also about 200 pounds heavier than a Mercedes-Benz S580. Guys, in the metric scale, that means it's 2,230 kilograms. So, you know, it's about 250 kilograms or 550 pounds heavier than the Tesla Model Y. Kia say the performance should be around 6.5 seconds from zero to 62 miles an hour. It's not exactly a rocket ship, but it certainly looks good. Will the Kia, what will the Kia EB5 be sold in America? Unfortunately, no, it won't at this, not at this point in time, because this is the Chinese made version. Now I do believe Kia at some point in time plan to build more EVs in the US, and this is probably gonna be one of them but initially it'll be sold in places like Australia and overseas markets where you can buy Kia and Europe, of course, as well. The EB5 GT has the same wheelbase as the standard models, 108.3 inches. The vehicle is 73.8 inches wide, 67.5 inches tall, 
and 181.7 inches long. Now, apparently the vehicle will have an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack and approximately 260 to 270 miles of range probably around about 450 kilometers. So what are your thoughts about this car? Do you, do you like it? I mean, I quite like it. I do think it's quite heavy, maybe a little too heavy for the size of vehicle. Um, possibly could be a smart move for Kia and Hyundai to use gigacasting with this vehicle. That would help reduce the weight. Now they do actually apparently plan on using gigacasting for their vehicles. Some of their EVs that will be made in the United States, but I don't believe this would have that technology yet. Either way, Here's the positive, it will be relatively affordable. It's a relatively good size. It does have lithium ion phosphate batteries. So those three things, they're a pretty big win. I'm a fan of this car. The only thing I think Kia could do is just maybe put it on a diet. Guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.